So guys, before moving into the tutorial, as I said in my previous video that we are having a PFP contest in my Discord server and the winner has been decided. A huge shout out to Gert. He made this PFP for the server. I really appreciate his work. A huge shout out to him. Now let's move on to the tutorial. So hey guys, it's Z here back with another tutorial and I hope you all are doing great. So guys, today I'm going to teach you how to master your shakes using keyframes in CapCut. Yeah, you heard it right. I make shakes using keyframes instead of using effects. I sometimes do use effects, but that depends upon which type of shakes I'm making. So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining each and everything I do to make shakes in detail. So without wasting any time, let's begin. All right, guys. So first of all, open your CapCut and now get your clips ready. And now, as you can see that I have already given the zoom in and zoom out. In different styles first of all i was doing the wikisaba style so i'm going to teach you how to do that type of shakes then for the next one these are some soft zoom in and zoom out and i'll give it some soft shakes then for the next one i'll give it some rotate too and in the last one it's just that simple zoom in and zoom out with some panning so that's what i'm going to do here right now now first of all let's move on to the first style and i'm going to explain how these shakes work so guys for the wikisawa style shakes these are pretty easy if you guys know how the keyframes work and how to make shakes with keyframes i'm gonna explain them in detail here right now first of all just add your zoom in and zoom out and as i said that the shakes will be made through keyframes what you have to do is first of all follow the same method for keyframing as i'm doing here open the keyframe animation now add an x and y keyframe at the starting Go one frame forward, add one there, then go a few frames forward, add a keyframe there, then go a few further frames more forward, add one there, and then just keep doing it until you reach the middle of the clip. Now, as soon as you get to the ending, just keep closing the distance and keep adding keyframes. So that's the method that I do in most of my shakes with the keyframes. At the starting and also at the ending, the amount of keyframes are more and they are closer to each other. Same for X, same for Y. Now there's one more thing that you have to keep in your mind that at the starting and at the ending, the value of X and Y should be greater than at the middle because at the starting and at the ending, the shake should be intense and at the middle, the shake should become a little bit soft. Anyways, these are the only two things that you have to keep in your mind and rest of the thing is quite easy. Now all you have to do is just change the value of X and Y. So for that, at the starting, I wanted it to be intense. So at the starting, I kept the value of X and Y 100, both 100. Then from here, just drag the keyframe down. For the second one, I just kept it at minus 100. And now for Y, you can just remove the keyframes too. I just removed the second one and move the third one down. And also you can change its placement right or left. And as you can see that at the starting, it was 100. And then as further we go, I reduce the value to like 20 or 40. That should work. Then same for X, the third keyframe, I kept it around 80. Then for the fourth one, I moved it down to minus 50. Then for the other one, I moved it a little bit up. Then for the next one, I moved it a little bit down. Then for the second last one, I moved it more up, like around 20, because I wanted to give it some more movement at the ending. As I said before that at the starting and at the ending, the value of X and Y should be more. So that's how we do these shakes. And that's just basically it. This is how I do. Now, the last thing you guys have to do here is just give them the graphs. Just select the keyframe and give it the middle graph and do the same for X, do the same for Y. Now, if you guys think that the shake is looking okay, you can just keep it like that. Or if you want to change its value, you can do that with the keyframes. Just move it up or down to whatever you like. Now, if you want to copy paste it on the other clips, just select all of these keyframes, just copy it, and then make sure that this white line should be at the starting of the clip on which you want to paste. Then just select it and paste it right there. Do the same for the other clips, and then you're done with this shake. Now, all you need to do is just compound clip all of this, give it motion blur. But I would say that you guys should export it because CapCut has a lot of glitches. So it reduces quality most of the times with compound clip. So just export it, import it back in your timeline and give it motion blur around 60. 
I'm just gonna do it with the compound clip because I'm just doing the preview. So as you can see, this is looking actually decent. Now let's move on to the other one. Now guys, for these type of zoom in and zoom out, I mostly prefer some soft sheets. So I'm gonna do that here right now. We will do the same method as we did before. Just add a keyframe at the starting, open the keyframe animation, go one frame forward, add one there, then go a few more frames forward, add one there, now go around at the middle, add one there, then add one right before the ending and one at the ending. Now this is the type of uh, keyframing that we're gonna do here. Now for the values, don't change the value of the first keyframe, change the value of the second one around 80 to 70. Then for the other one, just move it up to 80. Then for this third or fourth keyframe, whatever you have there at the middle, you have to make sure that it's not around 80 to 70 because as you can see it will just ruin the canvas so just keep it around 20 then for the next one just move it up around 20 or 30 that should work then for the last one you can change its value too if you want like you can keep it around minus 30 or plus 30 depending upon your keyframing then what else you can do here for y you have to remove the second keyframe second one down just like this and move it a little bit close then for the third keyframe move it a little bit close to the starting and move it up and keep the value around 60 or 40 that will work then for the second last keyframe move it a bit to the left and move it down at like around 40 then for the last keyframe you can move it up to 40 or 60 that should work now as we did before in the shake you have to give them the graph and you're done so that's basically how you can make this type of shake and it's quite easy you just have to do it with keyframes and try to make it look better you can add more keyframes here too and one more thing that i would like to say here if you think that the shake is too soft you can add some effects here too or you can just increase the value of x and y like I just opened the keyframe animation and I just increased the value of X and Y2 to make it look more shaky and that works. Now the last thing as we did before, you just have to select all of these keyframes and then paste it on the other clips. Now the next thing is just give it motion blur after exporting. I'll just compound clip all of this and then give them motion blur. And now as you can see, this is actually looking good. So guys, for these next four beats, I added the same shake as I did on the previous one because we are gonna do a different thing here. The shake will be the same, but we are gonna add the rotate here. So that gives it a different movement. As you can see here, I have already added the shake as we did before. These are some different type of zooms. So the rotate looks good on these. So for this, you have to add a rotate keyframe at the starting, one at the ending, now just open the keyframe animation and follow the same steps as me. Select the first keyframe, give it the graph, and now move the graph down. Now as you can see, if you move this graph down, the clip is rotating to the left side, and if you move it up, it will rotate on the other side. It depends upon you wherever you want to rotate it. I mostly move it down just like this. And then for the second keyframe, just give it the graph line and make it go a little bit straight and a little bit up. And that's just basically it. This is how I make this type of shake here with this rotate. And now if you want, you can just copy paste it and put it on the other clips. Or if you want to change it, you can do this thing too that just make it go a little bit more down and a little bit straight at the ending. Or you can just make it go up at the second keyframe, like move the graph of the second keyframe a little bit up. It will give it some different movement. You can try to do anything with these graphs, just play with them and each of the time you do a different thing, the shape will be different. So just try to adjust it according to your need and then just copy paste it on the other clips and you're done with this rotate too. Now if you want, you can just simply export it and give it motion blur, that will look good. Or if you want to make this shape more intense, you can try to add an effect here, which is shape. So just go to effect and search effect called shake. This is the basic shake for CapCut. So just add this effect 
And now what you have to do is just put it above the clip. At the middle of the clip, just split it there. So this should be the length of this. At the beat, just change the value of strength and speed to 100. Then you have to add keyframes there. Then at the starting, just change the value to zero, both strength and speed. Then at the ending, change the speed to 25 and strength to five. Then open its graph and give graph to the first keyframe. Then give graph to the third one and move it straight. Do the same for strength two. And that's it. That's how you can make this shake a bit more intense. Now just copy paste it on the other clips. And guys, keep this thing in your mind that you have to always export the shakes first and then give it motion blur. Otherwise, the shake will look kind of off. Anyways, this is how you can make your shake a bit more intense by using this effect. There are some other effects here too, like jitter blur and some other things. But this is the type of shake which I mostly do. Now, the last thing which is remaining is that panning, which we can do on longer clips. So now let's move on to that. Okay, so guys, now for this last panning, you need to understand a few things first. First of all, as you can see, I opened the keyframe animation here. And as you can see that at the starting, it is a zoom out, then it slows down, and then it zooms in fast again. Then it goes back and just starts to zoom out in a fast speed at the ending. Wherever the graph is fast, Try to make the shake intense there and wherever it slows down, try to reduce the value of X and Y and keep moving the keyframes further away. So these are the few things that you have to keep in your mind before making this shake. I don't know if I'm able to make you guys understand that, but you guys need to listen to it three or four times. I don't know, but that's the thing you need to keep in your mind. Anyways, now I'll just start to give it some random keyframes and also guys every time i make a shake in CapCut, it's always random it's never the same thing again and again it's always random because i do it with keyframes anyways now for the keyframes as i said that at the starting it will be more close and more intense and as soon as the clip slows down the zoom in or the zoom out slows down i'll just keep it further away then where it starts to move up again. I made the keyframes a bit more close. At the next keyframe, I kept it going further away. Then at the ending, I kept them moving closer and closer. So that's the thing I'm gonna do here. Now, the next thing is just give them random values, nothing much. So as you can see here that I just kept giving them the random values. And as soon as I get closer to the Scale keyframe, I reduce the value. Then at the keyframes which were closer, I kept increasing the value. So that's the key that is the thing that you have to do here. And you can also remove the amount of keyframes. You can also add more keyframes. It depends upon you. Just try to do something random and see if it's looking good. If it's not, then try to adjust it. Like I cannot explain these things myself. I just do random things. So try to understand it by yourself right here. Because as you can see that I'm just trying something random here. It's just completely random. Every time I do the shake, every time I do the keyframing, it's random. The values and the keyframe placement is the thing which is important that wherever the zoom out is fast, the values should be more there. The value should be greater there and the amount of keyframes should be greater and wherever it slows down, it should go further away. The keyframe should go further away and there should be less values. So these are the things you need to keep in your mind. And there, as you can just see that I started to give them random values. And then at the last, I gave them the graph. And that's just basically it. This is how I do it and it's done. It's just like a work of one minute or two minute and it just works. Now the very last thing is the rotate. You can add the rotate keyframe there too, or if you want to change anything from the keyframes, you can increase their value or decrease their value depending upon you. Now the last thing, as I said, for the rotate, I just added the keyframes. And then at the starting, I made it go a little bit down. And at the ending, I made the graph go a little bit up. So it like 
zooms out and rotates and then when it zooms in again it rotates and then goes back so these are the things you need to understand and you need to keep in your mind while making these type of shakes and that's it this is how i make these shakes with keyframes i hope you guys understood this tutorial and talking about the graphs i will make a graph tutorial on each and everything like how to master graphs in CapCut or in any other app because the graphs are same in most of the apps i'll do that tutorial too next anyways thanks for watching i hope you guys understood this tutorial see you guys in another video till then bye bye